Underground Bunker. This is your proprietor, Tony Ortega. And yes, right behind me, that's Tori Chrisman. Tori came to court today. It is, uh, what is today, Tori? Thursday? Yes. Thursday afternoon, shortened day, but very intense. Jane Doe 3 continued her cross examination this morning. We had a very strange surprise. At one point, Sean Hawley was asking her, basically was kind of trying to uh, dig into what Jane Doe 3 had done after breaking up with Danny Masterson, and, which was about 2002. And then she put up a 2007 email. Now, from the back row, I couldn't make it out. It was up on the screen, but up at the far other end of the courtroom, but there's no way. And the reporter sitting next to me, I asked her if she could read it. She said, no way. And Judge O'Mate, initially, Sean Hawley said she wanted to read the entire email. And Judge O'Mate said, nope, just publish it, which means make it an exhibit in the trial, and then ask questions based on it. Well, this 2007 email was apparently from Jane Doe 3 to Danny. And once she showed a copy of it to Jane Doe 3, she said, there's something wrong with this email. I, I recognize some parts that I wrote, but there's stuff in here I did not write. And she pointed out, for example, it's, I mean, we, I could just barely make out that it starts out saying, hey, Dan. And she said, I never called him Dan. I wouldn't have done that. So very suspicious, very interesting. What The only thing I was able to get from the context of what they were saying about it, 2007 was the year that Danny married Bijou, Bijou Phillips. And the, the gist of the email from the context of what they were saying, it appeared to be supposedly... At that point, Jane Doe 3 sending over some negative information about Bijou to Danny sort of to warn him as he was marrying her. That's, that's about as much as I could get. And it had something to do with Sean Lennon? I don't know. I don't know. It was all a mystery. But then interesting, uh, they, they just, they didn't really get into it. So it's, it remained a mystery, except that once Jane Doe 3 said she didn't write it, then the issue was raised, was this some sort of hack? And Judge Olmedo ruled that since the defense brought that up, that means the prosecution can now talk about the hacking that these people say they've been through. Very interesting. Very interesting. And so Jane Doe 3 was then able to get into some of the harassment she says she's been going through with Scientology, some of the surveillance and, and hacking. So that was pretty dramatic. Um, and then not too long after that, Sean Hawley finished her cross-examination, did a quick redirect and recross. Judge Omedo does not allow much redirect and recross. She does not allow them to kind of like use that to just do more direct and cross. So we were done with Jane Doe 3, but, but hang on. The other important thing that happened today was whenever Jane Doe 3 starts to talk about the harassment she's getting from Scientology, which she insists is still going on now, she gets emotional. And you might remember from the first trial, she had a full-blown panic attack one day. I, I heard some sounds and I looked up at the witness stand at one point when they were, they were talking about something else and I could tell, uh oh, here it comes. She was starting to cry, she was starting to shake and this was right, you know, we only had about a half hour left to go before lunch and um, I think at that time, Sean Hawley wanted to ask her about that uh, Detective Reyes interview and they were trying to get a transcript ready. But again, Jane Doe 3 had just talked about the harassment of Scientology and it had really affected her. She was starting to get really emotional upset. 
And so the judge decided, no, we're done now, and let her go before Holly got to ask that last question. So she said she would keep her on call. I don't know if that means she'll come back at some point, but a very dramatic way to end the first half of today. Second half of today, Tori Christman came. Very happy to see her in the gallery. And we had the expert, Dr. Barbara Ziv, who talked about uh, rape trauma and what they call counterintuitive victim behaviors. That is, victims of sexual assault acting in ways you might not expect. And, uh, you know, Judge, I mean, it's, uh, Deputy DA Mueller did his best to relate it specifically thing, to things in the case because Dr. Ziv is what you call a blind expert. She's coming in to talk generalities. She has not studied the case. So uh, DA Mueller did his best to kind of ask her questions to make it relate to things that, that had happened at Jane Doe 3 and Jane Doe 2 and Jane Doe 1. And uh, I don't know, Tori, what do you think? She, did she do a good job? I thought she did an excellent job. Like, like Tony said, she very much clarified it was a blind thing. So she, she wasn't testifying, you know, directly about Danny or anything else or the, or the Jane Doe 1, 2, or 3. She was just telling about rape and, and um, abuse and very specific things. I thought she did a great job of talking about it. And it was one last thing. It was shocking for me to hear how few people reported. I mean, it was like... What, 20%? I thought it was like 15%, right, yeah. 15 to 20%. 15% percent. Uh, uh, report, and that's that's with strangers, even. So, yeah, you know, it's it's like last time. I thought that, uh, Dr. Minnie Mechanic was great last time. We got an expert who is backed up by research, who is saying some very interesting things that relate directly to this case. But the question is, did the jury pay attention, and will they take it into account? That's good to know. Let's hope they do uh, keep it in mind when they get to deliberations weeks from now. All right, another dramatic day here at the trial. And uh, from the Claire Shortridge Fultz Criminal Justice Center, this is your proprietor, Antori Christman, signing out.